from uh, letter C, he enjoys his friends. And number three, we're talking about meekness, how comfortable it is. It helps you to uh, and have a peaceable life, and it helps you to enjoy yourself, and enjoy your friends, enjoy God, and it helps you to, uh, it helps to put out of reach your happiness so that your enemies cannot disturb it. So number three is friends. Uh, we talked last week about how you are able to enjoy yourself, being at peace with yourself. You're able to enjoy uh, these things, and, and it is a blessing. So now we're going from your being able to enjoy yourself to being able to enjoy your friends. And there, is, uh, number three says, meekness teaches us to make allowance for others. You understand that we are likely, in the spirit of the flesh, to uh, in the flesh to take uh, offense at very easily at things people say. But meekness allows you to make allowances for others. Uh, understand also that when you are instantly riled, it is a, a re reflex reaction to protect yourself. You're protecting your emotions, you're protecting your dignity, you're protecting your ego, and making allowances takes a little time and reflection, and it also takes a little, um, uh, it takes the Holy Spirit of God to pacify you and protect you so that you can know that your reputation does not need to be, um, uh, it does not need to be, uh, I was going to use the word defeated, but guarded and, and uh, protected at every turn. Let God handle that. But let's turn over to Proverbs chapter 10. Defended is the word. I don't know how I got the word wrong word. Um, your reputation does not need to be defended at every moment. You need to protect your reputation from doing evil, but you don't need to guard your reputation at all points, let God do that. And that's one of the reasons why we are uh, so easily upset by other people. Right, let's go to Proverbs chapter 10, and we'll look here in verse 12. It says, He that winketh with the eye causes sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. Uh, we have this, um, uh, these fools that will prate about and, and, and be, um, uh, they will they get upset very easily. They, they are filled like a peacock with their own beauty. And when anybody touches it, it makes them, uh, it, it upsets them and ruffles their feathers. Uh, we don't want to parade around and, and be like a fool and puff ourselves up and be concerned with ourselves. Um, but now turn over to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. Uh, four, uh, chapter 4 and then look in verse 8 it says above all things have fervent charity with yourselves for charity shall, over, shall cover the multitude of sins when uh, you are able to overlook a matter it, you are able to in love overlook people's offenses overlook their sins overlook their transgressions against you charity will be able to do that uh, it is is an act not of charity but of um, uh, a very high selfishness to hold grudges and to not overlook the offenses that people make against you. Jesus did it and therefore we can do it. So it gives you the ability to enjoy your friends because be sure your friends will offend you. They will not always say what you want them to say. They will not always respond how you want them to respond. They will not always do what you want them to do. They will offend. But the good thing is that when you make yourself friendly and you make yourself as a child of God should, then you find that you are able to overlook the things that they've done and continue the relationship and allows you to enjoy your friends without it assaulting and bruising your ego. You can enjoy them better if you will overlook sins. This prevents, letter B, this prevents arguments and feuds. Think of all the arguments and feuds that it would prevent if you would overlook some of the things that people do to you. And it crushes quarrels before they get started. 
there are people who want to fight. There are people who want to, they're just abrasive and they want to have a little bit of a tiff with you. Just like that, at the drop of a hat, they're ready to say something. And often, if we would just overlook it, it would pass. And we could go on about our business and everybody would be happy. But because they're abrasive, we get abrasive and then we begin a quarrel that never had to get started. So it helps you to enjoy your friends. In addition to that, it, letter D says he enjoys his God. He enjoys his God. It is a blessing to be able to enjoy God, and meekness is what helps us to do that. This is the pinnacle of all happiness, that is enjoying God. The pinnacle of all happiness is to enjoy God. It is the most comforting enjoyment man can know. That's what made the uh, sacrifice of Jesus condescending to come down to man so great. He had unity with his Father that no man could conceive of because he and the Father are one. And yet he left his, he did not leave his oneness with God, but he left the very presence of God in heaven where he had perfect and sweet communion with him to come to earth and then have to cry out, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? And so the enjoyment of God is what Jesus wanted to give to us because he knew how sweet it was and how sweet it is. And there's nothing greater than us than that for us. We get to know God and we can enjoy him Number two, when we, uh, we enjoy God when we evidence an assurance of His favor. An assurance of His favor. It is a blessing to have assurance. People write to me and they say, I, I'm not sure if I'm saved. I, I don't know if I'm, I, I'm not sure. And they have conflict. Conflict of mind. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 13, I write these things to you that believe that you may know that you have eternal life. God intends for you to know, and He knows that unless you know, you can't be happy. And therefore, He gives us assurance. Having assurance of the favor of God is also not just the assurance that you are saved and on your way to heaven, but the assurance that you're walking with God. You need that assurance too. You can't be happy unless you know you're walking with God. There's a happiness that comes with walking with God that is unavailable to those who are in sin. And therefore, there is a confidence and enjoyment of God when you have a meek spirit. You're able to do, uh, live life as Christ lived with a meek and quiet spirit. And it gives you assurance of His favor. Letter B, we experience the communication of His grace. Understand that when you want to be meek, you're setting out to do what man has found to be impossible. Man is not by nature meek. Man is by nature... Uh, self-defensive. Man is by nature uh, easily agitated. Man is by nature, even quiet people are by nature, they have anger in them and they have uh, ego in them that they want to keep and protect. It is a communication of His grace that's necessary to be meek. He needs to be communicating that grace with you. He is not able to communicate that grace with you if you don't want to be meek, but when you want to be meek, you have the opportunity to have the communication of His grace on a regular basis. That's what you're looking for, the communication of the grace of God. Think about it. If you're able to enjoy the fruit of the Spirit of God, that is God at work in your life. That is God doing something that He's never been able to do in your life before because you never let Him. It's the work of God going on in your very eyes, in your very spirit, and very, right in your face. Right? For your observation, you see a, a, a situation handled with meekness. God has communicated His grace. I, I'm not normally like this. This isn't me. I know me. I've been around me long enough to know who I am. And this is not me. This is the communication of God. He did this in my life. He made me meek. Number, uh, letter C. His image is continued to be stamped upon us. It's not just a communication of His grace, it is His very image, the image of His dear Son. And we have the uh, likeness of God in, stamped upon our hearts. What a blessing to be able to enjoy God in a manner which you can say, I'm, I'm being changed into His image. I'm being conformed into the image of Christ. I am beginning to look like Jesus. What a wonder, the meek and lowly Jesus, who is as a lamb slain, is able to make me look like Him. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. 
letter D. The, the meekness, uh, the, the meekest have this in the greatest degree. The meekest have this in the greatest degree. They have the greatest degree of the image stamped upon God, uh, st of God stamped upon them. The greatest degree of the communication of His grace have the greatest degree of His assurance because they have been blessed with meekness. Look at Isaiah chapter 66. <coughs> In Isaiah chapter 66, we'll find this verse in uh, verse 2. It says, For all those things hath mine hands made, and all those things that have been made, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is a poor and a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. They have the communication of God and His attention. God has made the heavens. He's made the earth. But there's one person to whom the Lord is going to look and communicate with and have sweet communion with. And that is the man who is poor and of a contrite spirit. The meek and humble man. The man who before God is very sensitive to his will. Who's very willing to obey and to do all that God has told him to do. He's going to have the greatest um, degree of the image of God stamped upon his life, the greatest communion with God, and he will enjoy God. Because God will look upon that singular person. Number three, meekness is that calm state of mind that very much qualifies, it qualifies, and disposes us for the reception of divine truth and comfort. It qualifies and disposes us to the reception of divine truth and comfort. Understanding that truth and comfort come from God, but they don't come from God arbitrarily. He does not dispense with them, of them to anyone at all, anytime, for any purpose, or for any reason. He does it because of uh, a qualification that man has already underwent. God has prepped him with meekness, and then he communicates to him truth and comfort. When passions are loud and rowdy, Man cannot be receptive to the still, small voice of the Lord. When your spirit is all astir, rowdy, and unreceptive, you aren't able to hear what God has to say to you. Now, I think we can say that this is the very case. If you have children, you know exactly what I'm saying. When they are dancing in a circle, squawking at the top of their lungs, shaking things and rattling things and you're trying to tell them to stop, they don't hear, hear you. You can't give them instructions as to what to do. Go pick up your room and get ready for bed. They don't hear a thing you say. And why is that? Because they're so caught up in the very moment of all their excitement that their, their mind is distracted and into what they're doing. And the noise of it keeps your voice down. And the Bible says that God has a still small voice. And when he speaks to us, we need to be able to hear him. Look in verse uh, Psalm 25, and we'll look in verse 9. Twenty-five, Psalm 25 and verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. He will guide the meek. Why is it he can guide the meek? It's just like that big horse that can be guided. Not all horses can be guided, but some can. If they don't want to be guided, they won't be guided. But they become meek. You may have heard the story of the, how they, uh, they, the illustration of how they train those circus elephants to stay on those chains that they hook them up to with a stake into the ground. Now, those elephants can tear those stakes out of the ground and run off if they want to. And I believe that the, they have, and I don't even know if they still use the stake in the chain, but you, if you've ever seen picture, circus pictures of the the elephant, they'll have them on a short chain staked to the ground. And what I understand is the illustration is that when they're baby elephants, they chain them with that same stake. And the baby elephant pulls and pulls and pulls, but it can't get off of the chain because it's too strong for them. And so they eventually, they give up on trying to pull away because they've been taught by the chain 
that they can't do it. So they quit. They quit trying. And they don't forget that they can't pull off that chain. So as they get older and older and older, older they don't realize that now they're big enough they can run away. They think that they're stuck because they feel the tightness of the chain. And, I'm, and, and whether or not that's actually true, you know, I'm sure you could probably look that up and find out that the, the whole thing's a myth. But the point is, <laughs> it's a great illustration to, sh to give us of the idea that uh, we could <coughs> buck God, but if we'd let him train us, we would quit fighting him all the time. And we could actually be useful. I mean, that big elephant, if it wanted to, it could be just walk off and stomp people. But it, they want it to be useful, so they train it from its early times to be useful. And useful to them in the circus. And so we also want to be useful to God for his good purposes. And in order to do that, we need to be trained. And this verse tells us in verse 9, the meek he will guide in his judgment. He's going to guide the meek. And the meek, will he teach his way? He can teach the meek. Why is it he can teach the meek? Because they'll listen. They're ready. So we need to be that person. Uh, let's go over and we'll look in Psalm 147 while we're here. <clears throat> Psalm 147. This is a very tremendous study to be ready with, to be right with God and to be to be uh, close to him and to guard every day. Today you may be meek and tomorrow you may not be, so you need that protection in your life that is constantly before your heart to be Christ-like. Psalm 147 says this in verse 6. The Lord lifted up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. The meek are lifted up. They are lifted up above their troubles. We all have troubles. But the meek are lifted up above their troubles. As far as meekness reigns, so far are they above the storm. The storm is going to transpire. The storm is going to, to rage. But so far as meekness reigns, you are above the storm. Those have, those have truly made great advancement who are at home in God and live a life of communion with Him even in the common accidents and occurrences of this world. I want to read that again because this is important. Those have truly made great advancements who are at home in God and live a, common, a life of communion with Him even in the common accidents and occurrences of this world. You know, some people are able to commune with God in the biggest things that happen. When there's great trials, a death in the family, tremendous sickness, financial ruin, when tragedy strikes, when disaster happens, people <clears throat> tend to think they should be closer to God at this time. And they do. Many of them find that those are times in their life when they are close to God. But you've made the greatest advancement in your life when in the common, ordinary, everyday incidences of life and the accidents that occur and the very small things that perturb us, we're able to commune with God. That we're able to be lifted above our troubles. That we're able to be lifted up in meekness. God is able to do this for the meek. He's able to lift you up above them. And so that when you drop your pen down into the between the console and the chair of your car and you're trying to write an important note. When you um, realize that you've left, lost, left without your wallet and you are there at the gas station to pay and you don't have any money. When you try to um, dial your phone and you drop it and break the glass and you just got the new phone. Uh, when the, the little things of life perturb you. When the phone rings just as you're about to open your mouth and say something important for the fifth time then it is those times when if you could commune with God through that, that you'll find that God has, has lifted you up and you've made the greatest advancements. It's not the greatest advancements that you commune with God when there's, uh, when there's awful tragedy, but the greatest advancements when you commune with God, even in the midst of no tragedy, just your natural life as you walk close to God day by day, moment by moment, and in the tragedy. 
so that you're not without them, but you're not only them. That your life is, is a, a meek and quiet life at all times. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. Oh, God, to be lifted up by the hand of God out of our troubles. Lord, to commune with you and to walk with you in the spirit of holiness day in and day out, moment by moment, resting in the Father. Oh, Lord, let that be our blessing. Let it be our lot in this life to be named with he who is of a meek spirit, a meek and lowly Jesus. You are meek and lowly, Lord, and you said if we'd come to you, you'd teach us. If we take our, your yoke upon us, you would teach us that you are meek and lowly of spirit. We can learn of you. So God, teach us. Keep us from sin and offense, Lord, and keep us, not to, uh, keep us from being offended. Bless this next service, uh, worship service, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.